Yeah, I'm going to be talking about Ghost on the Jamstack. So I'm going to give you a few questions after I've introduced myself. Uh, yeah, I'm David Darns. I'm developer advocate at Ghost. Uh, I'm David Darns on pretty much every platform. Um, you can normally find me on Twitter. I'm happy to talk on there, uh, amongst other things. <laughs> so yeah, a few questions. So raise your hand if you know what Jamstack is or means or have heard of it. Oh, we got, we've got a small handful, okay. Second question, have you heard of Ghost? Oh, wow. That would be the projector. Oh, great. Anyway. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so does anybody use Ghost or aware of Ghost or anything like that? So we've got a couple of hands. Uh, so I'll explain Jamstack stuff a little bit later, but I'll explain what Ghost is first. Uh, Ghost is a publishing platform. Uh, you can host a blog with it, you can run a blog with it, you can manage your content on your site, uh, various different publishing methods. We have, we have a few publishers on our platform, so DigitalOcean, DuckDuckGo, Square, Full Story, uh, Troy Hunt, um, to name a few. But what I need to do is I need to explain how Ghost would, one, work with whatever platform that you're using, and two, how that relates to Jamstack, which I've said before. So I'm gonna try and fill in a few of these question marks. So Ghost itself is comprised of three core components. There's the admin interface, the Ember admin interface that runs on top of Ember.js. There's the Ghost API itself, and the handlebars front end template framework, which is where we have all our template files and like the front end basically. That would be where your theme lives and you edit it so, so how you so wish. Now with the Ghost API, we've, we've updated it somewhat recently. So it can be used as a headless CMS, which means we can take out the handlebars JS front end and swap it out for something like Gatsby. Uh, anyone used Gatsby or heard of it? We've got one, we've got a couple of hands full. Um, you tried it. Um, cool. Uh, so just to briefly explain it, Gatsby is a static site generator. That might be trivializing it a little bit. Some people might say it's a bit more than that. Uh, but essentially, you can build a website with Gatsby. It runs on top of React, and it allows you to build websites. Uh, so what you can do is you can take the Ghost API and plug it straight into Gatsby and enrich it with all the content from your Ghost blog or Ghost publishing platform and that's all your pages, posts, navigation, everything like that, and create a website from it. And these static site generators can consume this API. Um, so, so this is kind of what I was talking about with Jamstack. Um, I'm gonna briefly explain Jamstack. There's a lot of resources out there to explain what Jamstack is. But Jamstack, so you have JavaScript, so that's be Gatsby in this case. You have APIs, which is what Ghost would be doing in this case. And you have markup, which is the produced output of that generative tool. So that's where the jam stack comes from. Essentially, it's just like a buzzword for uh, a type of stack you might use. So lamp stack, there's all sorts of different other ones. But yeah, it's a, it's a buzzword, but it's to do with these static sites that produce static code at the end result. So we've got a couple of others here. So we've got Nuxt, we've got Eleventy, we've got Hugo, and we've got like a whole lot of other ones. And they can all use the Ghost API. They can just pull that content through and build out a website with, those, with that data, essentially. Um, anyone used any of these others? I feel like it's gonna be a bit tenuous if... Uh, so, Hugo? Nuxt, great. Okay. 11T, cool, okay, so we have got a few kind of floating around in there. Uh, yeah, like I said, it's an API, so you can use that with any of these and a whole bunch more. So our documentation is growing at the minute. We do have pretty good documentation on how to use, it, use the Ghost API with Gatsby, 
we are working on the others and we want to expand that so then we can use or share the method in which we would use the ghost API itself. Of course, we've got pretty extensive API documentation. So we've got the Gatsby documentation on how to use that with Ghost. Uh, this is a personal blog post of mine on how to use 11T with Ghost. And like I said, the full API documentation is there for you to kind of pick through and stuff like that. But we hope to make that uh, a little bit more filled out so then you don't have to be navigating all of those different endpoints. So like I said, we'll go, we've got now, we've kind of got a Jamstack forming here. So client, so we'll think about client as well. So client would, or whatever, whoever's writing in the publishing tool, so they'd write their content in the admin interface, that would go through the API, and then that would then in turn be outputted into, well not outputted, but sucked into the Gatsby application and then built out as a website. So it's going through this step process. So this is a kind of jam stack right here. But of course we've got to like host it somewhere or no one's gonna see this. You're gonna have this just locally on your computer. So we've been using Netlify for a few different tools for a few different applications and trying it out in different ways. There are of course others, you could do AWS, you could, you know, I guess you could host it on FTP if you really wanted to. Um, but the advantage of Netlify is that it is a building, it's a deployable platform. So we can, every time we do, so say you've got the project on a GitHub repo, every time there's a commit to master, you can then, Netlify would then automatically rebuild and publish that website. So it, it would kind of go along for the ride. So anytime you made a change to your Gatsby project, it would rebuild and then redeploy that site automatically to your live site. So that's been working well for us, it's been working well for me. So this is looking pretty good, I think. This is like a setup that I would be quite happy with. Um, I mean, this is quite different to what a lot of you may have been using already. Uh, but there is like a bit of a flaw with this. And that is, it's all well and good if the developer makes a change, but what, <coughs> excuse me, what if the content creator or the content editor makes a change? How do we get the API to talk to Netlify directly and rebuild the website because we won't want to do commits every time someone makes a content change. With that, we would use webhooks. So webhooks would then communicate between the API and your hosting platform, well, in this case, Netlify, and they would communicate in order to redeploy the website every time there was a content change. So there are hooks that we've got in the API that we can listen to and communicate between the two. So we have documentation on this as well. Uh, we have integrations with Netlify. We've got other integration methods as well. Um, I mean, I like Netlify quite a lot, so I'm probably a bit biased, but you could do this with other tooling as well. Heroku? Yeah, yeah you could, you could, I guess you could. Get her pages, yeah, you could do that. <laughs> could be incremental. I guess you could do that with GitHub Actions or something like that. Now.sh, yeah. Basically on S3. Hmm? S3. I mean, I think Netfly is on S3, so it's like, it's, really yeah, nice. so the same thing. Uh, sorry, anyway, what I wanted to expand on on this, but we didn't have time to do, uh, is that these stacks are really good. These, these Jamstack websites are really good. But what I find really interesting is extending this into React Native projects or some sort of different application of this of this use. So we had an example of what if you had a React Native project, and that would be like an iOS app or an Android app, and it had terms and conditions on it, and that terms and conditions is the exact same terms and conditions you have on the website. You could tell the app to just open up a web page, and that would be the end of that, and it would have to load it every time you go there. Or you could use the Ghost API and take, send that content to both the application and the website at the same time. So that content would be parity, that would be exactly the same, but they would be appearing in different resources in different locations. And that wouldn't mean you have to load a web page inside the application, sometimes it kind of looks a little bit clunky. So I think there's a lot of versatility here with the Ghost API being, or the Ghost 
admin space being a headless CMS. Um, <laughs> so is the back end the ghost like Git or is it something else that runs on a server? Right, so I should have explained that a bit better and I will try to do that so now. The database bit, yeah. So Ghost comes in two forms. There is Ghost itself that you can sign up to at ghost.org. So you can sign up and create a publication there. Or you can have the self-hosted version, which is completely open source and free for you to use. You can just download that and install that. That can be on a Heroku instance or something like that. And that's where the whole thing would live. So it's a node application. And the front end is, or well, the admin interface is done with Ember. So it's all there for you to install and do what you want in that, in that sense. Cool.